In this video, we will be discussing the proper use of a containment ventilated enclosure and demonstrating best practices. Only properly trained personnel involved in preparation and dispensing of compounded preparations should be allowed into the lab space. The facility should establish an initial level of personal protective equipment to be donned, such as a facial hair covering, mask, hair bouffant, and shoe covers. Per the facility's standard operating procedures, documentation, and USP requirements for compounding non-sterile preparations, personnel must perform appropriate hand hygiene when entering the compounding area. This includes washing hands with soap and water for at least 30 seconds. The technician should dry their hands with disposable towels and allow hands to dry thoroughly before donning gloves. The personal protective equipment must be appropriate for the type of compounding and documented in the facility's standard operating procedures. The proper selection of PPE is to protect personnel from chemical exposure, as well as to protect the compounded preparation from potential contamination. As a best practice, the compounding preparation should be thoroughly examined so that all of the necessary materials are staged inside of the CVE prior to engaging in active manipulation. All chemicals, utensils, glassware, and other materials should be placed inside the CVE so that the technician does not have to remove their hands from inside the CVE during powder handling. As part of the pre-staging workflow method, it is best practice to have a wet bin located just outside the face opening of the CVE. This will come in handy at the end of the compounding process while transporting soiled equipment to the sink for cleaning which will minimize potential environmental exposure of aerosolized powders. If using a compounding formulation software, notice that the infrared scanner is positioned outside of the CVE, while the computer's mouse is inside the hood. The advantage of this technology setup is to allow the technician to interact with the software while keeping their hands inside of the CVE during every step of the formulation workflow. The technician should use deliberate, slow, and intentional movements inside of the CVE while weighing powders on an analytical balance. Excessive motion should be avoided so as not to disrupt laminar airflow inside of the CVE, especially during powder manipulation activities, such as weighing and pouring. The waste chute should be assembled on the side of the CVE allowing the technician to properly dispose of contaminated material waste so that chemical residue cannot aerosolize in the lab environment. Glassware and utensils used in the manipulation of powders should be handled with care before being removed from the CVE. A wet-to-wet -wet transfer method involves spraying down glassware, utensils, and other equipment that have powder residue to keep the powders from going airborne which would create both a personnel and environmental exposure. Micronized powders can statically charge to the outside of plastic containers. It is wise to wipe down the bottles to remove any powder residue prior to taking them out of the CVE. The technician's outer layer of gloves was used during manipulation of powders. Prior to removing the chemical containers and glassware from the CVE, the technician should doff their outer layer of gloves and place in the CVE's waste chute. When the technician comes back to the CVE to begin the final cleaning protocol, they should don a new set of outer gloves. These gloves will become soiled while cleaning the CVE and must be doffed into the waste chute at the end of the cleaning procedure. Properly cleaning a negative pressure CVE involves sweeping particulate into the airflow. The cleaning procedure will create airborne particulates. The CVE's laminar airflow moves from front to back, so the technician also moves the wiper from front to back, reorienting the wiper to a clean face on every stroke. This allows for maximum absorption and cleaning efficiency. All soiled wipers used during the cleaning procedure and the technician's outer set of gloves should be disposed into the CVE's waste chute. At the end of a shift or when the waste bag is mostly full, the best practice for removing the bag is to twist and hold the neck while slowly sliding it off the waste chute collar. 
Finally, tie a knot in the twisted bag so that no particulates can be released into the environment.